So niacin is one of those supplements that everybody, lo- a lot of people love to hate. Um, <clears throat> and why is that? Why the debate? Again, because uh, you see some conflicts in the in the literature. Um, we'll go into some of those conflicts and uh, some of the results in the second half of this uh, video. This video is on a on an article that was suggested by Dr. Angie Stones. Um, Thank you again, Dr. Stones, uh, one of our viewers. And again, it's uh, it's incredible what you learn from um, from others if you just stop and listen. I'm glad I stopped and took a look at that article. Um, <clears throat> without further ado, let's go ahead with the with the uh, part two of the article. Part one actually went into this huge list of um, of biomarkers that they were looking at. And it started to talk a little bit about correlations. Um, <clears throat> I sort of bogged down a little bit there because, again, you can go back and look at the last half of that last video. You see it gets um, somewhat tedious. Now, <clears throat> this part of the video talks about the actual results, and then it talks about what's a very interesting part, clusters. Um, clusters of different uh, components of the uh, biomarkers. And again, one of my favorite clusters here has to do with macrocyte function. And you'll see why in this video. Again, pardon me, maybe spending too much time on that. Let, let's go uh, into some of the conclusions uh, and discussions. So all subjects, again, the 19 of them, had uh, an atherogenic uh, mix of dyslipidemia and insulin resistance. Um, their ages. Uh, the mean was 47 uh, with a standard deviation of 13 years. Um, <clears throat> body mass index was 32. So as I said, these were obese uh, middle-aged men. Plasma triglycerides coming into it were 217. Uh, cholesterol, uh, LDL or bad cholesterol was uh, 125. So they had bad numbers coming into it as well. HDL was very low. Uh, HOMA IR, as I mentioned before, was three times um, normal. <clears throat> now, this was only an eight-week study, and the the folks that are major um, proponents of insulin, I mean uh, niacin, and I'm a proponent of niacin uh, like everything. I don't see anything as black or white. I do think there there's more than just a signal in the literature which would indicate there's a mixed bag of things going on. And this study, actually, that's what the, uh, this study does. It goes into the molecular uh, reactions and says, yeah, there's clearly a mixed bag. You do get some increase in uh, insulin resistance and uh, you get some improvement in a lot of other areas. And again, I think some of those other areas are very, uh, very interesting and very helpful. I would say this, um, I get a lot of focus in, from viewers on the increase in insulin resistance. Uh, I think John and I are both good examples. Um, we're both managing our insulin resistance uh, very, very well at this point. And it's a pattern that I see typically, not within uh, eight weeks, but within six months, um, assuming you do the things you're supposed to do, the impact on insulin resistance does not appear to be uh, permanent. That's one of the questions raised by this study. So yes, it, it, um, it shows that you do have an increase in insulin resistance, but over the two months, well, we already knew all that. Um, what it doesn't show is the impact over the six month period. A Couple of other things that it does show that are very interesting. Um, there are no changes on uh, in- on body uh, mass index, things like that. Um, it improved the dyslipidemic profile. <clears throat> Here's a couple of things that I thought were very interesting. Adhesion molecules and macrophage activation. Now, why would they even look at that? Well, remember, let, let's go back and think about the mechanism for uh, inflammation. First of all, it's not so much having high LDL that causes the problem. It's having injury to the endothelium or intima. So once you get those cuts, nicks, um, injury to the endothelium, the lining of the artery, that's when LDL can get slipped through there and lodge in the wall of the artery, the uh, intima media space. Um, 
adhesion mo molecules, then uh, it stands to reason, and again, that's just one of the theories that this hypothesis that that uh, creates, does increase in adhesion molecules cause some of this problem? In other words, uh, things sticking to that slick endothelial lining of the wall due to cuts and things like that. Macrophage activation. Why is that interesting? Well, <clears throat> again, let's think about inflammation. Uh, once you get this plaque in your artery wall, your immune system does want to come in, uh, absorb that LDL that's uh, parked in that artery wall, um, digest it, and uh, get it out of there. Well, how does it digest it? Again, macrophages come in. They, uh, I'm using a little nonverbals here, they grasp um, the LDL, they bring it in, they're lysozymes. Uh, release enzymes within that macrophage to digest that LDL. Now what happens with uh, significant inflammation? You get so much of this lysozymal activity, these digestive enzymes in the lysozymes, um, being released that it damages and even kills the macrophage. So <clears throat> again, you, you uh, there appears to be, at least in terms of hypothesis generation, a major component of macrophage activation to the extent that you have uh, death of the macrophage and spilling of those lysozymal contents. That's where you get the, um, the liquid, hot liquid plaque. And that, <clears throat> that, again, is what's dangerous. That's what causes the clot. And the clot causes the, the heart attack, the stroke, the dementia, and all those other bad things. So <clears throat> let's just go through here. Uh, like I said, uh, this article was going to get geeky enough and detailed and long enough without me going over a lot of the intro uh, stuff. So <clears throat> I've been very geeky. Those of you who are starting to get bored, this is going get, to get even more so. So you may not want to watch the rest of it. But for those of you who are interested in um, again, deeper details around the biomarkers. Um, I couldn't help but um, underline some of these issues. As you see on this page, I couldn't help but underline a lot of them. <clears throat> and why is that? Because this page is talking about clusters, clusters of those biomarkers, and wanted to spend some time going over that. So at a significance level of uh, probability of 0, 0, 1, what that means is with, they found a lot of clusters of these biomarkers. And if you looked at it from a probability perspective, the probability was one in a thousand. Um, so there's probably significant correlation in these clusters. Now, what were the clusters? There were seven distinct clusters. The first one is a decrease in triglycerides was strongly, excuse me, negatively correlated with uh, increments in those like HDLC. Uh, duh, <clears throat> if you haven't seen any of my videos on the triglyceride over HDL ratio, you need to take a look at them. Those um, decreasing triglycerides, increasing HDL, both have an Im impact, uh, very positive impact, and, and a, a high ratio of triglycerides over HDL is my major tip-off. That's the first thing I look at when I look at a cholesterol test. Um, because it shows the patient has metabolic syndrome or insulin resistance. Insulin causes the body to shut down triglyceride uh, burning, and it also tends to chew up HDL. So that's why you tend to see that with high insulin le levels. Now, <clears throat> furthermore, the HDL-C uh, cholesterol and APOA1 ratio was integral to that cluster. Um, again, significant um, thoughts in terms of Okay, what's going on here? Reduction in total cholesterol and LDL was the main were the main was the main drivers bad English of a cluster integrating reductions in ApoB and LP little a. ApoA1 was significantly associated with this cluster. So, <clears throat> again, uh, John has told you a couple of times he's got what he considers to be significant LP little a. Um, one, I think it's 120s, 130s, uh, 150s, 180s, that kind of number. Um, 
like I've mentioned before, I take care of uh, uh, several people that have 400, 500. They, you know, they they have some of that um, uh, French Canadian gene pool, uh, creating significant LP little a problems. Now, <clears throat> what does this mean? It's just, that LP little a is significantly associated with APOA1 and APOB. I think what it's again more hypothesis generating. Given my experience, I think what that means is, again, LP little a, and again, given my uh, experience with it, I think LP little a, it, this is supportive of the hypothesis that LP little a is really more of a uh, reaction to um, things that you'll see with APOA1 and APOB. In other words, um, <clears throat> getting... Um, insulin resistance and damage to that, that intima back under control. Uh, we gets out of control and LP little a appears to be something that increases to help patch that up. Third cluster, <clears throat> insulin resistance, uh, HOMA IR, insulin and IL-6 levels. <clears throat> now, what was interesting, however, fasting glucose levels were independent of this cluster despite significant ele elevation on treatment. So on treatment reduction in APOE levels did not correlate with changes in any lipids. Um, I think it was Tom Deck or um, one of the v viewers made a couple of comments about that. But uh, rather clustered with those circulating of MMP9, it's a matrix uh, metalloprotease um, produced by monocyte-derived macrophages. Again, we get back to the role of macrophages in this inflammation process. Now, there's a separate cluster, elevation in adiponectin on a treatment correlated with non-significant increment in cystatin C. Uh, two distinct clusters of inflammatory markers were identified, um, <clears throat> one with ICAM-1 and one with TNF. TNF is uh, tissue necrotic factor. Now, remarkably, and despite a 20% decrease on treatment concomitant with those with atherogenic uh, uh, lipoprotein uh, lipids, changes in APOC3 levels were independent of all other biomarkers. What does that mean? I have no clue. If, if you do, please comment. Please uh, fill us in or fill me in. Now, re with respect to biomarkers associated with he hepatic function and uh, metabolism, Glucose tolerance levels decreased independently while those of uh, homocysteine increased. So there's a lot of folks out there that love to focus on homocysteine, and you'll go, aha, that's the problem with niacin. It increases homocysteine. Maybe you're right. Um, <clears throat> again, I'm not stopping my niacin. Uh, NAC is a, uh, NSE is a potential marker for macrophage activation. It was independently reduced. Um, <clears throat> And again, it goes on into further components of inflammation. Uh, here's another way of looking at it. Here's the actual tables. Uh, I'm going to zip through these. Lipids and lipoprotein. Triglycerides, 31% decrease. Uh, bad cholesterol, LDL, 17% decrease. ApoB, which is the protein part of, bad, uh, of LDL, 21% uh, decrease. HDL, 13% increased. So a lot of interesting things. LP little a, 21% decreased. And APOE, 25% decreased. Uh, again, we've had several people focus on that. I don't think I'm smart enough to understand fully the impact of uh, APOE. Now, um, I've done several videos on APOE, and I've had, um, obviously, I know several facts about it, <clears throat> but I think there's some more subtle theories going around that I'm not sure that's significant. Anyway, HOMA IR increased, insulin increased, um, and C-peptide increased. C-peptide is a part of the original genetic structure of insulin before it gets cleaved into functioning insulin. So what that basically means, that, that, I don't think that's that significant for this um, this study, other than to mean that, you know, this was endogenous or insulin made by the person, um, and these people weren't getting insulin, so that's why I don't, uh, I don't understand their desire to get that other than just to be complete.
But significant immediate uh, insulin resistance, as I've said, I'm not surprised about that. My question is, does it last six months or, or longer? And I don't think that's the case. Look at some of these um, inflammatory markers, tissue necrotic factors, uh, three of them here, 12, 12, and 14% decrease. Uh, CRP took a nosedive, 36 to 40% decrease. Uh, homocysteine, 26% uh, increase. Um, <clears throat> adhesion molecules, I haven't heard of those before. I've he heard, obviously, of the adhesion process, but again, significant decrease in adhesion. So as we talked before, maybe that's helping, uh, maybe that would help uh, decrease this process of um, plaque getting deposited because first the, the, uh, the theory is that first it has to get uh, stuck or adhere to the lining of the artery before it gets there. Now, <clears throat> as I have said many times, uh, I, once I get going on the geeky parts of some of this, uh, I can go forever. Um, as our friend, I don't even remember his name now, uh, said, there are always answers. Be careful when you start getting there, though, because every answer creates a whole new set of questions. If you've made it this far, thank you very much for your interest.